I decided way, way back when we first started the Gibson Group that I'd read school journals and see who the good writers would be for children because we decided to start the Gibson Group on children. We'd gone to Cannes and discovered that there, that was the big lack in the market. And in that I found Margaret Mahi was writing for the school journals, loved the stories, and uh, there you go. And what was the first thing we did? Was it I'm trying to think. Cookie Land? It might have been Cookie Land. Cookie Land. The interesting thing is that the pictures on the screen sometimes move in so strongly that that's how you, you know, they replace the, pi the pictures. There are the vague pictures that you've got in your head. And of course, sometimes you think, well, no, that's not the way I intended it to be because the picture in your head is so strong that you can't quite take on the picture of, on the screen. Um, so there's a movement backwards and forwards, I think, between the image out there and the image in here. When you write a book, um, it goes out and a lot of people hopefully read it. And nobody reads quite the same book because they, everybody receives it differently according to their age and experience and a whole lot of things. And, you know, according to what they've already read too because of the way readers match, unconsciously match texts and ideas up inside their own heads. So. You can't stand over the reader saying, no, this is this is the way it should be. You're interpreting it wrongly. And if somebody uh, gives you a bad review and everything like that, you can't say that. You can say to yourself they've misunderstood you, but you can't really um, say it publicly with, uh, with too much confidence because you can't deny that that's actually how that reader has a, you know, read that story. Margaret was told that we wanted a series. This it was something that we asked for, whereas The Haunting was her book. Yes. So it was two quite different approaches, wasn't it? And so we said we wanted a series um, with a magic, with some yes. magic. And you came yes. up with Mum, Two Kids and a Magical House. Yes. And then A Man Who Lived in a Tree. Yes. Like that, then ca Tony Rabbit came along as designer. Mm. and didn't give you a tree, did he? No. He gave you a power pylon. <laughs> <laughs> which he proceeded to put um, lots and lots of stuff from the dump and made it a tree by the time it was well, sort of when finished. You, uh, when you <laughs> work for television or film or anything like that, you work as a member of a team. Mm. Um, when you write a book, on the whole, you write as a solitary individual, sometimes very solitary. Uh, it's a it's a different process, and of course, each process has uh, has got something to enjoy. <laughs> the solitary one of writing the book where you're in charge um, is one thing, but it's very interesting working with, uh, say, for television because of other ideas, the things that are possible, the things that aren't possible. I mean, theoretically, anything's possible in a book, but. Uh, a television people will say to you, oh no, we can't do that, that's going to be too expensive or something like that. Mm. And you have to modify uh, according to things that don't bother you when you're writing a book. Also, you know, writing for television, um, people have said to me, there's too many words, you've made people say too much. Let the pictures tell the story. Uh, so that what you write uh, in a lot of cases is, is a description of what can be going on. Having said, having, because, I, because people have said that to me over the years, um, I've been quite interested to see films where people actually do say a lot. <laughs> so it's not a, it's not an absolute rule, because of course where you've got a good actor or something like that, um, they can make the words fascinating. Not to be the only one. That's a shock. And you. You're more powerful still. Well, there's certain vividness that are inherent in certain words. There's the rhythm of a sentence or sentences being read on the page. And uh, there's uh, Oh, there's things you can do because your story goes out and the reader takes it in and remakes it sometimes. Though, of course, the pictures, where it's, where it's a picture book, the picture on the page 
um, gives a sort of instruction to the reader, you might say. This I like your picture. dialogue, though. Oh, I hope so. You <laughs> define your characters with all the wonderful dialogue, don't you? Yes. Well, the words of the story are very important to me, of course, not only because they describe the action, but because um, in many cases there's a certain sort of rhythm, there's a certain sort of resonance to them that mm. I think reinforces language in the listener. I still am, really. I'm coming to catch you. And it got the Carnegie Award, so it was a very flash book to be buying the rights to do. But the thing was, because of that um, prestige, we got PBS, Public Service Broadcasting in the States, to be interested. But as part of that, they wanted an American star in it. So, I mean, everyone knows that The Hauntings got some wonderful um, uncles. Yes. And so oh, we had uncles. to come to Margaret and say, one of these uncles, Margaret, cannot be a New Zealand uncle. <laughs> one of these uncles has to come from overseas. And do you remember <laughs> we gave you Ned Beatty? Yeah, um, he made an admirable uncle. He did. As far as I know, I didn't contest it at all. No. Um, because uh, you're dealing with a, a different... Oh, you're dealing with with a, a medium where the rules are different and certain sorts of necessities arise, which don't when you're writing a book. Oh, when I started having stories published, there were uh, very few illustrators in New Zealand. Mm. And, uh, of course, I had the great excitement of being picked up by a publisher in the USA, and uh, they chose the illustrators. And on the whole... The publishers have chosen the illustration, illustrations to go with my stories. And in fact, I was talking about this last night and saying that um, I think the truest picture books are books that are written and illustrated by the same person. Um, you know, like uh, Maurice Sendak and Where the Wild Things Are and the illustrator knows where he can, or he or she, uh, can leave the words out and let the pictures tell the story and things like that.